Hello everyone. I'm going to talk about gravitational wave research that is being done at IUCA. IUCA has a vibrant uh, gravitational wave physics research group working on various aspects related to it. And currently there are about 35 members who are actively working uh, in this field at IUCA. So let's get started. Uh, so, so, work on gravitational waves at Ayuka started long back in 1987 with uh, Professor Sanjeev Dhurandar. Uh, his work on data analysis um, in 1991 with Professor B. S. Sat Prakash, who is currently at Cardiff University in UK, uh, uh, laid out the basic uh, technique with which we are currently de uh, detecting uh, gravitational waves, which are embedded deep in the noise. Currently, the gravitational wave research at IUCA can be classified into these five broad categories. So here, let us first discuss the group that is working on instrumentation. Here are the group members and I am discussing only one project here which is about improving cavity alignment. So what is cavity? Here I am showing a model. Uh, of GW detectors that is being adopted by LIGO and Virgo. So here is a laser source uh, from which laser comes and then splits into two beams and then comes back and combines to give you the resultant here. So if there is no GW signal we expect that it will be zero because both waves will cancel each other there will be destructive interference. Whereas, if there is a GW signal, we expect that uh, there will be an interference pattern and we will extract GW signal from there. But obviously, in uh, uh, realistic scenarios, that does not happen because there are a lot of noise on top of it. So, uh, your signal is always embedded deep in the noise and also if there is no signal, there is always a noise. But anyways, the point is um, that the physical length of these two arms is 4 km. But the effective, less, uh, effective length is in fact 1000 kilometers. So how do we do that? We make these laser beams to bounce back and forth several times, around 200-300 times. And which makes uh, the effective length, uh, length to be around 1000 kilometers. But you want these uh, laser beams to bounce back and forth very uh, accurately. If there is even a slight misalignment, you will get some fictitious effect which you don't want. Therefore, manually, uh, manually aligning the, uh, these uh, cavities is a very tedious task because uh, they have to be very accurately aligned and it is very difficult to achieve that uh, manually or analytically. So what we do instead is uh, adopt the method of neural networks uh, and automate this task. So in simple words what we do is that we tell the uh, cavity itself to how uh, and uh, based on some algorithms how to align itself so that um, uh, there is perfect alignment. So now let us discuss about the group that is working on the compact binary coalescence or CBC. So CBC means uh, stellar mass objects which are interacting with each other, each other and emitting gravitational waves. For example, uh, emerging black holes or emerging neutron stars or neutron star black holes. So let us first discuss about the searches. How do we search these uh, signals from CBC? So these are the group members and uh, uh, let us discuss about two projects here the first one is about improving gw search algorithm here is a figure which shows how gravitational wave signals are embedded deep in the noise so as you can see the uh, gravitational wave signal is li lies somewhere here while all these um, things that you are seeing are random noise uh, uh, that are present in the detectors so one way of uh, uh, finding these signals is by using what is known as the match filtering technique. So what is done in uh, here is that um, uh, since we know what to expect, since we know the form of the gravitational wave signal, we can 
exploit that uh, information and correlate it with the noise and find where uh, the signal might be but the problem with this technique is that uh, you have a, a large data uh, large continuous data uh, data that is coming and so you have to perform this match filtering technique over like uh, the whole um, data and also for over millions of waveform models because the uh, template of a gravitational wave signal will be different for different uh, binaries uh, which have different masses spin or uh, for neutrons or neutrons or black hole black hole they will have different uh, gravitational wave signal so you have to check for all those signals in the data so if you do this match filtering technique it uh, uh, might be very uh, computationally expensive it is like millions of cpus if you want to do it in your laptop it will take maybe hundreds or thousands of years so uh, uh, so it is very costly hence uh, you should have a way uh, to optimize your search because in the future we will have more detectors and more detections and uh, then uh, the uh, the need for a new uh, computationally optimal strategy becomes very important so here is an example where the group is uh, working on this hierarchical search method which uh, basically reduces the computational cost by uh, uh, dividing the uh, search strategy in two parts first it uh, what it does is that it um, reduces the threshold and on snr the, uh, or roughly speaking it uh, first find the potential um, uh, uh, trigger points in the data and then do a uh, exhaustive search near those uh, neighbor uh, in the neighborhood of th those areas so in this way the computational cost uh, reduces significantly uh, by a uh, few factors in the real data then the other project is about the uh, about studying scattering encounters so what are these so it is not necessary that uh, that uh, two uh, bodies will always be orbiting around each other it may happen that uh, another body comes from um, uh, comes from a very large distance come near uh, to the uh, another object and then goes back to a very large distance so so in a more concrete way of saying is that if a body comes from infinity and go escapes back to infinity after interacting uh, with another body uh, nearby so in the, those situation also uh, you will have the emission of gravitational rays so but it, it, it is not as easy um, as studying the gw emitted by binaries so modeling and detectability of such interactions uh, becomes a bit complicated uh, so this proje project is about uh, studying them and how we can model and detect uh, these interactions then the next part under cbc is extreme matter group uh, uh, so here are the group members and i'm discussing three projects here so first is about constraining the equation of state of neutron star so this is like very important uh, it is very important for physics nuclear physics particle physics to know the equation of state of neutron star why because neutron star are the densest objects that we know in the universe so if we know uh, the equation of state so equ equation of state is uh, basically the relations uh, thermodynamic relation between the uh, state variables the variables that determine the state of your system so uh, roughly you can think like the relationship between pressure and um, density so if you know the us of matter deep within neutron stars that will uh, help us understand very fundamental physics from the nuclear physics point of view and we can do this using uh, electromagnetic observations and also as well as uh, gravitational wave observation so the group uh, is now working on using um, uh, gravitational wave observations to const uh, to put constraint on this um, equation of state uh, models 
which uh, have been proposed in the literature and recently uh, the constraint has also been uh, uh, put uh, based on all the uh, i mean all the major astrophysical observation that we know about neutron stars so that puts a very tight constraint on the neutron star equation of state uh, which, uh, so he, here is the uh, figure doing that where the, the information from both the GW and the uh, electromagnetic regime is used to put constraint on the equation of state and these are some models equation of state models which um, uh, may be a potential uh, a true equation of state of neutron star which we currently don't know another important project is about uh, the study of tidal heating so what happens is that if you have a black hole uh, in a binary system uh, maybe nsbh uh, maybe new, uh, bhbh so in that case when they are spiraling around so gravitational wave uh, is emi uh, emitting the uh, and gravitational wave is carry uh, energy and angular momentum so the orbit shrink but what happens is that gravitational wave will also be absorbed by the black hole themselves so currently um, uh, uh, in the search of gravitational waves or when we are uh, inferring parameters from the gravitational waves we don't account for this fact that some of the gravitational waves has also been absorbed by the black hole and what effect can it lead to uh, in the determination of science uh, from these signals so this study is dedicated to uh, that how we can incorporate the tidal heating into our uh, into our uh, inference and study of gravitational waveforms another related project uh, is about modeling of compact stars so as i was talking about inference uh, so given a waveform you want to extract as much physics as you can uh, from that information so that you can do only when you have a better understanding of um, the objects from which these gravitational waves are emitted for example in the case of uh, neutron stars um, there is a lot of physics that needs to be known about the uh, say, structure um, uh, that um, uh, makes um, the neutron star for example uh, the nuclear and particle physics that is involved and then there are macroscopic aspects like um, the theory uh, with which you are working uh, your gravitation theory uh, for example uh, general relativity is that correct or not uh, if you take another gravity model uh, how it will affect the gravitational waveform and also the effect of surrounding uh, for example magnetic fields how it can affect your uh, waveform so knowing all these things uh, is uh, very important to uh, properly infer the information uh, coming from these gravitational waves. The, the next project that uh, the group is working on is uh, about the lensing uh, of gravitational waves. So uh, gravitational lensing um, occurs when um, a massive object uh, is present in between the source and the observer and that massive objects cause curvature in uh, space-time. Uh, in simple words it causes light and gravitational waves to bend around it. So in case of uh, electromagnetic signals, it, uh, for example, uh, light coming from uh, a star. So if there is a gravitational lens that is present in between you and that star, then you will see multiple images of that star. In case of gravitational waves, you will see multiple gravitational wave events for the, that same source. Since the strong lensing event uh, will occur in the time domain in case of strong lensing, uh, rather than the space domain, uh, uh, as in... Uh, electromagnetic waves and um, when a strongly lensed uh, strong lensing happens due to an intervening galaxy or galaxy cluster then it is inev inevitable for a gravitational wave to not encounter a population of macro lenses in the form of stars and remnants in which case the signal uh, the wave effects uh, will come into play and uh, it will cause modulations in the waveform so it will be like a, a water wave uh, is passing through a slate it uh, you cannot uh, take ray optics you have to assume it to be a wave uh, to um, obtain the correct physics and these modulations are shown to be uh, very significant in some realistic scenarios due to which um, we can even miss uh, certain uh, jw signals uh,
But in general, you expect microlensing to only affect the inferred source parameters. And that means uh, the parameter estimation that you do uh, from, from a given uh, waveform. Then the next uh, area in, the, in which the group is working is numerical relativity. And here I'm uh, uh, briefly uh, writing two projects. The first is about dynamics of horizon of a black hole. So for example, if two uh, uh, black holes are colliding, then initially they had two separate uh, horizon and after the uh, uh, merger they have a single horizon so how does that uh, uh, dynamics happen and can we extract any information of the, uh, uh, that dynamics from the waveform that uh, uh, we are receiving from those uh, merging binaries so that is a very interesting project and then uh, another is about uh, developing some numerical uh, numerical schemes to uh, deal with future null infinity so that is a bit technical so i won't go in much detail but uh, what it means is that um, uh, theoretically what we have and putting it into the computer is uh, two uh, quite different tasks so in computer you cannot put infinity you have to uh, take into account uh, of those things somehow and also you cannot uh, even describe what is event horizon uh, in your computer because event horizon the concept itself requires um, yeah, yeah, complete information about your space and as well as time so so i, I won't go into much detail but um, this is the idea that the group is also working on some uh, developing some numerical schemes that can be used in uh, numerical relativity uh, in the future and why numerical relativity is important is related to what i discussed in the um, uh, first part of this cbc uh, where i was uh, telling you that in the match filtering um, process we match with the waveform template we already know that means we have to know a priori what is the form of the gravitational wave signal and that you know only by numerical relativity and uh, some post newtonian uh, uh, calculations now let us discuss another broad uh, area in which the research is happening at iuka uh, it is related to stochastic gravitational wave signal so what is it so it may happen that uh, there are some unresolved sources of um, uh, cbc or uh, uh, there may be events in the early universe like inflation, cosmic strings, or some phase transitions, which may uh, uh, which may uh, produce gravitational signals. And uh, gravitational signals from all these um, um, sources may superpose and reach us. So, how can we identify these uh, signals? So what we can do is we can um, uh, correlate the noise in the two detectors uh, or uh, if you have more detectors and these noise should be correlated because this um, gravitational wave signal is coming uh, in all of those uh, detectors so in this way we can measure the anisotropy uh, in th this uh, gravitational wave background um, signature which may give us some clue about the structure formation or the early universe as well so the group is currently developing a such statistics um, with the existing GW radiometer based uh, pi stock pipeline, uh, which it was also developed by the group uh, uh, to uh, study the anisotropy in the background. Another very important area is um, about the detector characterization. Um, uh, so I will discuss these two projects. That first is about no noise characterization. Uh, so it is very important for us to understand and lessen the sources of glitches in the instrument. So what are glitches? Glitches are um, fake, um, you know, triggers of the gravitational wave event. It may happen that if you are doing mesh filtering, you'll get some false trigger, false um, uh, potential signals. So there are some uh, sources uh, of noise which can mimic the waveforms, and those are called gl glitches. So it is very important to uh, understand and uh, and lessen the, the these uh, glitches in the instrument and the data. 
and uh, in this way you will improve the performance of uh, gravitational de uh, detectors and uh, it will help us reduce the computational cost in the mesh filtering as well uh, and the second is related to it um, uh, more um, specifically it is about identification of different types of glitches and their classification so the group is uh, adopting um, um, uh, again uh, an automated approach using machine learning in which uh, it will um, teach the system itself the uh, glitches and identify them uh, so that it will uh, automate and um, reduce the computational cost of this area Another important area in which the group is working is on the cosmology um, using gravitational waves. So one way we, way we can use gravitational wave signal is to infer the Hubble constant value. So Hubble, uh, Hubble constant value tells you how uh, much um, at what rate the universe is expanding uh, near us. And uh, it, it was shown by Schultz in uh, Bernard Schultz in 1987 that uh, you can uh, determine this Hubble constant using um, gravitational wave events since uh, uh, gravitational signals has um, uh, information about the distance. So the research at IUCA is on focusing um, is focused on improving this inference by uh, incorporating some uh, cosmological information that we have like angular uh, clustering uh, between uh, galaxies even though we uh, don't know the exact redshift of the source we may still uh, very accurately uh, uh, find the hubble constant value if we have a large number of uh, gravitational wave events and another project uh, is about um, finding compact dark matter sources uh, using micro lensing of gravitational waves so we discussed the micro lensing before so so uh, if we have dark matter in the form of compact objects uh, uh, which may have masses of uh, order of one solar mass then they they can also uh, do micro lensing of gravitational waves whose signatures we may extract in the uh, uh, gravitational wave from that we detect so here is an example of uh, how much micro lensing can mm, affect your waveform in both amplitude as well as the phase and here is an example of uh, stochastic uh, gravitational wave flux that we are seeing from all over the um, sky area uh, and it is up to o2 run that is about 2018 and uh, this is what we have Thank you so much for your time to know about the GW research that is being done at IUCA uh, through this poster. Thank you so much.